name is Peter Allen. I'm a lecturer in the School of Psychology and Speech Pathology in the Faculty of Health Sciences and I teach mainly second year research methods students. We know that students struggle with research methods, uh, particularly in uh, the health sciences. But we also know, of course, that research methods are incredibly important for their um, professional careers. So what we were trying to do with this particular project was look at ways that we could make research methods more engaging and more relevant for them, for the majority of them that don't see themselves as going on to be professional researchers. You know, they see themselves as becoming clinicians, I think, primarily. So the question was, how can we make research methods more applied, more relevant, more engaging for those students? We know that in research methods, active learning is, is, is something that works well. And so as much as possible, we wanted to get students actually doing research rather than reading about research and listening to people like me talking about research. This is something which I need to give full credit to Frank Bauman um, for. Frank is one of the experimental psychologists in the School of Psychology and Speech Pathology and he's very good with using Java. So what he did was put together a series of small um, Java experiments which the students could participate in online. Um, and so basically what happened was the students would participate in these experiments um, he also created an interface which allowed the tutors in my classes to quickly harvest the data uh, that the students were generating in the experiments and then feed it back to the students in more or less real time. One example might be a mental rotation task. Um, so you're presented on screen with letters that are rotated at various degrees um, and your objective is to identify as quickly as you can whether they are mirrored or whether they are normal letters. So what we did was for each tutorial class, which lasts 90 minutes, the students would begin by participating in this experiment. Uh, they would then have a series of activities talking about the, the methods which were used in that task, the purpose of that task, um, what researchers had found previously using tasks like that. Um, while all of this was going on, the tutor would be um, sorting out the data and then, of course, the students would have an opportunity to test the sorts of hypotheses um, which, uh, which previous uh, researchers have tested um, using those sorts of tasks. Each experiment was carefully selected and designed so as to meet certain very specific objectives which were tied very closely to the material that we've been covering in uh, the particular lecture that week. Why did we decide to create them in-house rather than using a commercially available product? This was something which we looked at um, quite a lot at the beginning of the project and it was certainly my original intention to buy an off-the-shelf type program and there are a number of off-the-shelf type programs that you can use for this sort of thing. Our decision was mainly driven by functionality and this need to be able to grab the data from a database and feed it back to the students in a very short amount of time. We of course did some research along with this project and the outcomes of that research seemed to suggest that the students were enjoying the process, um, but not only were they enjoying the process, they were learning from the process as well. I think that the idea is, is a very good idea and one which I'm very keen on and will pursue as much as I can you know, as I continue to teach these units. So the idea that we should be learning about research by doing research, not merely talking about research. Um, in terms of what I would do differently and what we have done differently, I don't think that getting students to actually participate in the experiments in class time is a particularly good use of class time. It's an independent activity, it's the sort of thing which they can do quite happily in the library, at home, on their laptop, more or less wherever they are and whenever they choose to do it. And so in 2013 we took that component out of the classes the students participated in the experiments in their own time and that freed up more time in class for discussion and activities. The other benefit of doing that of course was it gave the tutors a greater ability to fully prepare all their discussion points in advance of the class. One of the things the research has taught us a lot over the years is that the enthusiasm and passion of the lecturer is the greatest predictor of student success and student satisfaction um, in units. So I would, I guess I would propose that if people are thinking about ways that they can 
adopt new technologies to um, make their classes more engaging, more interactive and so on and so forth, then they're certainly on the right path and they should probably just keep it up. Mm -hmm.